Hey guys, welcome back. This is Ajax G here with another video. So today I have a build for a subscriber. He reached out to me on Instagram and told me that he streams on Mixer and he just needs a PC for streaming on Mixer and that he wants to play some games on the PC as well. So today, this is what the build is going to be. This case is a dark flash case. I actually got this from New Egg. It was only about 60 bucks because we caught it on sale. It was 54, but you know, shipping and New York State tax. Um, this is the LED case fan. So the first case fans that we've seen on Amazon, those were about 20 bucks after taxes, but Amazon shipped them to the wrong place. So I had to replace them with my own money. So th this pack is actually 40 bucks. If you guys want to get it, it's three LED fans for 40 bucks. It wasn't an extra charge to him because Amazon messed up. So I, you know, pay for that extra piece. All right. So we have a Ryzen 5 3600. Okay, the 3600 doesn't have integrated graphics, so that's why we had to get a graphics card. For our motherboard, we have a Gigabyte B450, all right? For our graphics card, we got a MSI Radeon RX 570. So since he's not going to be heavily gaming on this, the 570 is fine. It's still a great chip. Okay, we got some 16 gigabytes of RAM. We got 240 gigabytes of solid state drive and a 500 watt power supply. All right, let's get into the build. All right, so we're gonna start with the motherboard. As you see, it has the SATA cables. So these are for the hard drives. So you can use it for a hard disk drive or a solid state drive, doesn't matter. The motherboard comes in an anti-static uh, bag. So nothing, you know, shocks it <laughs> in travel, travel transit. Um, we're gonna take this out and then we're gonna pop the motherboard in. I mean the motherboard, <laughs> the CPU into the motherboard. So this is our Ryzen CPU right here. Just so you know, when you put it into the motherboard, there is a gold triangle on the CPU that lines up with a triangle on the motherboard, okay? So we're going to use the stock cooler that comes with this CPU, okay? It's the Wraith cooler. If he would have got a 27, uh, 2700, yeah, 2700 or 3700 uh, Ryzen 7 CPU, it would have had RGBs on the cooler, but it's perfectly fine. We got some dope RGB lights for this build and yeah so that's awesome just so you know so this is how it looks right and at the bottom it actually has the thermal paste already applied so i don't have to put it on the cpu but i always have thermal paste hanging around the house just in case i mess up okay as you see there are two brackets on either side of where you put the cpu we're going to have to remove these brackets to put the stock cooler fan on the cpu on this motherboard because the, this fan in particular you don't you know snap it over the bracket so you gotta actually screw it into the board all right so let's take these out now that we got the brackets off now we can install our cpu so you want to pull the lever all the way up like I said previously, there is a triangle on the CPU and a triangle on the motherboard. So you want to place the chip in, okay? Because it has pins, it's going to sit snug into the holes and then you're going to snap down the lever and it's going to have a little give, push it and snap the lever back in. All right. Now we're going to install the CPU fan. So the way I like to install it, I like to screw in at the diagonal. So I start at one diagonal corner and then I go to the other diagonal corner to screw it in. And I do for the next two as well. So this is just to make sure it's even on both sides. It just helps me out. Okay. So now we have the case fan, I mean the CPU fan installed and now we're going to get into the RAM. So you see how there's light gray, dark gray, light gray, dark gray. Those just to let you know that there is the dual channel. So you want to install two of the RAMs into the correct channel. So as you see, I have it installed. Now I'm going to install the IO shield. Sometimes it feels like it's in all the way, so you want to make sure you press it in until you hear like a little snap. Then it's in securely. So I'm just going to make sure everything is in. Everything feels secure. All right, let's go. Now we're going to put the motherboard into the case. So you see these little black things in the case? These are the standoffs. These are, you know, to disperse any uh, vibrations from the motherboard. 
if you do not screw the motherboard in correctly trust me you will find out what happens okay so this case actually came with some twist ties so zip ties so that's actually awesome that's going to help with some cable management and these are the screws that came with the case in the manual it'll tell you what screws go to what um and yeah just make sure you don't strip anything this case is actually some thin metal so i had to be very careful if you didn't already notice i don't have the sexiest camera set up so i grabbed my phone just to show you so these little circles on the motherboard you see how it has these little stars kind of like arrows pointing at it that is where you're going to screw in the screws for the standoffs okay so as i recommend you want to go diagonal i recommend starting up from each corner if you lose any screws as long as you have all four corners screwed in you should be perfectly fine everything is screwed in properly as you see the motherboard has not fallen down <laughs> so everything is good so this is where the power supply goes um i'm glad that this has like a little area for the power supply and stuff so you don't see it in the front because this does have a glass panel this is a 500 watt thermal take power supply so you want to make sure the fan is facing the bottom where the holes are okay you don't want the fan the other way because hot because air comes in from the bottom and hot air blows out from the little holes okay just like with the cpu fan we want to start at each dia each corner each diagonal corner so i did the bottom left now i'm going to do the top right and i'm going to do the same for the top left and bottom right finishing up with the last screw and then once everything is screwed in you want to just shake the power supply from the back to make sure everything is good so the case has two slots to put the hard the solid state drives if you want to screw them straight onto the case so this is where we're going to put them and we can plug it in straight to the bottom to the motherboard like so so 240 gigabytes let's get it in it is now graphics card time so let's open this bad boy and see how she looks all right, so this is the packaging. This is how it looks. Nice, has a nice little MSI folder. Sometimes it has stickers in it, but this one didn't have stickers. So that was kind of sucky. Um, yeah, I think it just has the manual, right? So this is the thank you, right? Boom, thank you MSI, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and this is the GPU, oh man. So, yeah. It's a dual fan, it has copper wire, and it doesn't have a back plate. But I actually like GPUs that don't have back plates. It gives it more of that techie feel. So we're gonna put it in the first PCI slot and pop it in. So on the motherboard, there's a little lever. You wanna pull it down, just like they are for the RAM. And you're gonna line up your GPU with these little slots, and then you're gonna push it in. But first I have to take out the little back pieces of the case so the GPU can be in there. So I'm gonna take out the second and the third one. Now it's time to put in the GPU. Now you're gonna to wanna to push it with a little pressure and then you're going to hear a click. After you hear that click, the GPU is firmly in place and you can now screw it into the case. Now we have the motherboard in, I mean the motherboard. Now we have the GPU in. Not that much uh, overhead, but it's okay. Make sure you screw them back in, okay? We're going to take out these so we can mount our fans. So I actually decided to go with mounting the RGB fans on the top and the back because the front panel isn't see-through, so it would be no point. You wouldn't really be able to enjoy the fans. So just like every other thing that I screwed into this case, you wanna go in a diagonal uh, angle and make sure everything is screwed in properly. Do not screw too tight just in case you want to take it out and so you don't strip anything. So as we see the fans are installed just in case you want to know about. So just so you know so these are RGB fans so this part is the front obviously so air is gonna go out this way in the back so air goes that way Okay, so it sucks air out. So, but if it didn't have RGB, wherever this is, it tells you where air flows. So if it was in the front like this, it would come out to push out of the back. Okay. So everything is installed. I attach everything to the power supply and power supply to anything else that's on the case. 
So this is the moment of truth. Let's see, I'm gonna hit that power up. And there she goes, look at that. That is beautiful. Okay, so I put two fans in the front to help push air through the case to take it out with the RGB fans. I'm not 100% sure how strong these fans are, so I just want to make sure I added some extra airflow. So I'm gonna put windows on his computer and this is the light show. This is really nice, actually. It came out better than I expected it to. So I set this up for him so he can use the remote that came with the fan instead of, so I was gonna put it onto the motherboard, but the motherboard only had one fan header. So I had to do a little bit of maneuver. So he has this remote. If the remote dies, he can always replace the battery. That is the good part. If he wants to change the fan out to another case, he can do that. And the remote has different settings on it and it has different colors. Um, I noticed that his favorite color is blue, so, you know, he can put blue on it. You can turn it off completely if you wanted to. Now, you have to click the on button to turn it back on, not just the color, as you see my dumb self done. And so I'm going to just set the blue for him, especially since he streams on Mixer. So this is the final result. Usually, I peel off the thing covering the tempered glass, but because I'm giving it to him, I'd rather him peel it off the first time for himself. So it can be nice and clean. I don't gotta wipe down any fingerprints or anything like that. But this is how it looks. It looks really great. This case is really small. Actually, I believe it's 14 inches high. So it's a small form factor because this is an MATX motherboard. I made sure there's enough air flow in here for him because um, of the GPU being so close to the chassis that covers the power supply. And this is how everything looks. So the funny part, every time I do a build, I always have an issue with it not showing, displaying anything. So I realized it was the RAM. So of course I had to go back and seat the RAM all the way. Cause sometimes you gotta put force, but you you know, you, if you ever built a PC, you get nervous when you put too much force cause you think you're gonna snap the motherboard. But this is how it looks with the blue light, with the mixer in the background. So when he boots it up for the first time, this is what his screensaver is gonna look like. And for the tempered glass, all you gotta do is pull the little latch instead of unscrewing anything. So if anything, he needs to dust anything down or wipe anything down, he can do that just fine. So this is the build, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you wanna build, feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram DM or Twitter. I'm more active on Instagram. Um, I actually have a, a website down below in the description, but my website is not taking payments right now. So you can definitely hit me up on Instagram and we can set this up through PayPal. Peace.